What's up guys, the snowman here, more Olympic talk today as I turn my attention to the men's basketball tournament at the 2024 Summer Olympics in France. So many great headlines, especially with there being so many great international stars in the NBA these days. I want to quickly run through the format of this event and then look at each group and preview uh, all 12 teams that will be competing for the gold medal this summer. This is the schedule pretty condensed as we have to fit everything in in 15 days. Remember international games only 40 minutes compared to 48 minutes in the NBA so it is a bit easier to recover. There's basically matches every three days group stage play during the first week of the Olympics and then the top eight teams move on to the quarterfinals which are played on August 6th. Semis on the 8th with the gold and bronze medal matches being played on August 10th. And these are our three groups of four teams each for the men's basketball competition. Format wise, every nation is guaranteed to play at least three group stage games against the other three teams in their group. The top two sides from each group advance to the quarterfinals along with the two best third place teams. So win loss record obviously key, but so too point differential. Nearly impossible to recover from a blowout loss with only three group stage games. So eight of the 12 teams move on to the quarterfinals, and this was the bracket at the last Olympics in 2021. From here, it's very simple. Single elimination knockout structure, quarterfinals, semifinals, and then a bronze medal match for the two losers of the semifinals. Gold medal final for the two winners to play for the grand prize. Uh, last time out in Tokyo, the USA won the gold over France despite losing to the French in the group stage. Uh, they'll be two of the favorites again. And speaking of the favorites, I want to run through each of the three groups now and preview each team's chances at this summer's Olympics. Let's start with group A, probably the strongest group from top to bottom. No real weak link with Australia, Greece, Canada, and Spain. I want to begin with Canada. They have the best odds to win this group and just a super fun team full of NBA stars. Canada hasn't competed at the Olympic level since Steve Nash was the linchpin back in 2000. Tons of NBA veterans, including Shea Gilgis Alexander, who's coming off an MVP runner up season and a unanimous All NBA first team. Uh, he's surrounded by the likes of Jamal Murray, RJ Barrett, Dylan Brooks, Lou Dort, and others. Unfortunately, no Andrew Wiggins for the Canadians, but they're clearly a program on the rise. They came in third place at the most recent FIBA Basketball World Cup in 2023, uh, defeating the USA in, to finish third in what was probably the biggest win in Canadian basketball history. So we'll see if they can do even better in France. They'll have to contend with Greece in Group A. And of course, anytime you mention Greece, you have to mention Giannis Antetokounmpo, who was in tears as he led his country to its first Olympic game since 2008. That win over Croatia a few weeks ago, a massive moment for Greece, and honestly, it's a roster that's pretty devoid of NBA talent outside of Giannis, but he's the kind of player that can win games by himself. Wouldn't shock me at all if they made it to a bronze medal match. Then you have Australia, who always seem to be contending for medals. Eight of the last nine Olympics, they've been present in the quarterfinals or better. 15-year NBA vet Patty Mills, the captain, heart and soul for Australia. He plays alongside a solid core of fellow playmakers and Josh Giddy, Dante Exum, Josh Green, uh, Matthew Della Vadova still alive and kicking. I see the Australians as a really solid team, but one whose potential probably capped at one and done in the knockout stage. Finally, we have Spain, somehow 39-year-old Rudy Fernandez, still their captain. Only two players currently playing in the NBA, including Santi Aldama of the Memphis Grizzlies. The Hernan Gomez brothers will look to be forces in the paint for a Spanish squad that won three Olympic medals from 2008 to 2016. Turning the page now to Group B, contenders France and Germany will do battle with challengers Brazil and Japan. France definitely the headliner in Group B. They've got home court advantage throughout the entire competition and a formidable defensive duo in Rudy Gobert and Victor Wembanyama. Uh, those two finished first and second in NBA Defensive Player of the Year voting last season. So between the shorter three-point line and international play and the lack of a three-second violation in the paint, it's going to be extremely difficult for teams to attack those twin towers. Not only those two, but you have guys like Nick Batum, Evan Fournier, Bilal Koulibaly. Loads of experience. France, the defending silver medalist from three summers ago. Uh, you can bet they'll have enormous expectations for these two weeks at home. Germany also projects 
projected to advance out of this group. Not so much luck for them at the last Olympics, but they put on a show at the World Cup last summer, winning the title, beat Latvia in the quarters by two points, an epic two-point win over the U.S. in the semis, and then another thriller in the final against Serbia. A Germany's Olympic roster has both Wagner brothers from the Orlando Magic, Daniel Tice, a key player, and their star, Dennis Schroeder, 31 years of age, but still adept at shifting and snaking through a defense from time to time. Then we have Brazil. This isn't your older brother's Brazil team. Gone are the days of Nene, Verajal, Splitter, Leandro Barbosa, a very little top-tier experience, guys that played a few years in the NBA but now find themselves overseas. I don't expect too much from the likes of Cristiano Felicio and Rahul Neto in France. Likewise, Japan will be up against it as well. Well, they actually have the lowest odds of any team to win this tournament. Japan obviously qualified for the last Olympics as the host nation three years ago, but before that, it had been 45 years since they competed at this stage. Uh, NBA fans will recognize Rui Hachimura of the Lakers and the excellent sharpshooter Yuta Watanabe. Final group now, Group C, another group where it's kind of two of the big fish in the United States and Serbia and two of the smaller guppies in Puerto Rico and South Sudan. Uh, let's get right to it. A lot of people are saying this is the best U.S. roster in at least 12, maybe 16 years. LeBron, KD, Steph, Embiid, and a litany of other creme de la creme type athletes. It's kind of weird to say that a nation that has won seven of the last eight gold medals in men's basketball has an edge or a fire in their belly this time around, but it seems to be true. Uh, the U.S. was embarrassed at the World Cup last year. They lost to Germany in the semis and then Canada in the third place game. It was uncharted territory for a team that always expects to win every single game they play. Uh, thus, for these Olympics, we get the Avengers, all the big names coming out of hiding. We get to watch Steph throw up lobs to Braun, AD and Embiid anchor the paint, KD and Ant-Man fill up the bucket. Uh, will be tremendous scenes as America looks to reassert its dominance in the sport they've owned since 1992. Lurking on the other side is the three-time NBA MVP Nikola Jokic and Serbia. They just met the U.S. in an exhibition last week, won handily by the States. No Bogdan Bogdanovic in that one, but we know Jokic can be a one-man army. He's already gotten an Olympic silver medal in the trophy cabinet, and I can't wait to see him battle with Embiid and AD down low. They also have the former EuroLeague MVP at point guard Vasily Micic. Uh, Serbia, the runners-up at the World Cup last year. They're definitely a major medal contender. Not so much for Puerto Rico, although they did beat Italy and Lithuania to qualify for these Olympics via the playoff route. Uh, Jose Alvarado, the six-foot gritty Pelicans guard, their best-known player, he dropped 23 points in that final game to qualify. And South Sudan flying under the radar as well. But just to be here is historic for them. Uh, this is their first ever Olympic appearance. And they made some headlines a few days ago when they just narrowly lost to the USA 101 to 100 despite being 41 point underdogs. America needing a, a game winning LeBron layup and a couple blocks to stave off defeat. So South Sudan appears to be a legitimate threat to make the quarterfinals. Some final thoughts now these are the overall title odds for this tournament according to DraftKings the U.S. currently a massive favorite at minus 500 that equates to about an 83 percent chance that they win the whole thing and it's definitely a fair number again the U.S. gold medalists in seven of the last eight Olympic games LeBron and Steph seem determined to achieve international success together, but the gap between the United States and the other nations is decreasing. At the end of the day, it's single elimination games in the knockout round, not seven game series, so anything can happen. Canada and France, the second and third best odds respectively. Canada will be tough to stop. Ten NBA players on their roster. We already mentioned how great France will be defensively, especially in the paint. Serbia and Greece, always dangerous just because of the multiple-time MVPs on each team. I wouldn't want to face Jokic or Giannis in a one-game winner-take-all setting. And then if you want to take a flyer, Germany, Australia, Spain, those teams all between plus 3 and plus 5,000 odds, so 50-1. to one. Uh, Germany, the reigning World Cup champ from last year, but a lot of the big-name players from other countries were absent that tournament. I think the U.S. is a pretty safe bet here 
here, but I wouldn't personally place it. Just too many variables. Uh, we just saw them barely escape against South Sudan. Those top seven teams uh, really all have a shot, in my opinion, but I've got the Avengers from the United States of America bringing home the gold in this highly anticipated event. Thanks a lot for watching my Olympic men's basketball preview. Please leave a comment. Let me know if you think anyone can beat the USA this summer, and uh, like and subscribe for more basketball content and weekly videos. Cheers.